Well, hello and welcome to Tourism Northern Ireland's TED programme series for digital webinars. I'm Paul McGarity from Octave Digital, and today we're going to be learning about social media and search marketing for tourism. So a bit of information about me. I am the Managing Director of Octave Digital, and we help businesses to improve their online presence and marketing. With quite a lot of experience in tourism marketing ourselves and a strong focus on tourism campaigns for regional tourism organizations and we've worked with Monaghan Tourism and currently with Cavan Tourism as well. So today we're going to be focusing on a number of topics. The first is on social media overview so we're going to be bringing you through the key facets of social media and social media channels and we're also going to be looking at best practice in social media and search marketing for tourism. We're also going to look at social media marketing in terms of content that you should have and also how to engage with people online. Search marketing will be explored in terms of examining what it is and how you as a tourism business can benefit from it. And last but not least, we're going to be looking at some great SEO tips to improve your business. So let's get started on social media marketing for tourism and hospitality. So the first thing I wanted you to recognize is the importance of planning in marketing. And this is a great example of what's called the RACE network. And RACE stands for uh, Reach, Act, Convert and Engage. And it's basically an overview of how to put together a tourism strategy or a marketing strategy for your tourism business. Starting off with planning before you do any type of business activity and then into different tactics um, focusing on reach then. So reach is very important then for targeting people across different types of media. So here we have search engines, social media, blogs and advertising and making sure that you identify your target audiences and then reach is how to actually reach those people across those media. And then ACT stands for interaction and that's basically how to interact with people on your website or on your blog through different types of content. And the third stage is convert. So it's converting people on your website or different online properties to make a marketing related action. So that could include contacting you or making an appointment uh, or making a booking through your website. And last but not least, there's engage. So it's engaging with the customers that you have to build up a, a relationship and encourage brand advocacy. So let's get started into modern tourism marketing. So the first slide I want to concentrate on is just the impact of the online environment on tourism. And as you can see here, a piece of research was really, really interesting. And it shows them how people, how travelers um, actually make their, their, their decisions um, based on different um, areas that they're, they encounter online. So the first is, uh, we have personal experience, um, maybe it's places that they've visited before or hotels that they've stayed at or restaurants that they know. And the second factor here, 51%, is friends, colleagues and relatives. So that's word of mouth positive reviews from people that they know and trust. But the third element here, which is the most important, is that there's a, a huge amount of people who are impacted by the online environment. So that's everything from rating and review websites up to operator websites and also the power of social media, which we're going to be concentrating later on today. So just to give you a bit of background in terms of how people are actually then uh, interacting with social media at the research stage. So this is very important to stress um, how people are actually uh, researching online. So social media now has a big impact and actually people going to social media like Facebook and particularly Instagram as well, which is a very visual social media platform, to actually do a bit of research on the area that they're going to or different kind of restaurants or amenities or activities or sites that they want to see. So it's very, very important then for tourism businesses to be very visible in those spaces. And this is just an example from a, a town, beautiful town in Sicily called Cepalu. And when you look on, if you go on Instagram, for instance, and look on their hashtag, you can see the range of different sites and activities. But you can also see tourism businesses from hotels to restaurants to bars that have actually uh, promoted themselves in that space by using the hashtag and uploading positive 
um, good quality content for Instagram. And that principle is the same for other social media uh, networks, but Instagram is particularly important. So an overall guide to social media networks and usage. This is an overview of what social media networks and platforms people in Northern Ireland are using. And the figures are similar to the United States figures and UK and the Republic of Ireland. But for Northern Ireland, they're showing that there's a massive 78% of people in Northern Ireland are using Facebook. So Facebook really is the very dominant social media uh, network. And that's why a lot of businesses are turning to Facebook, particularly to reach a consumer audience and also using uh, Facebook advertising. So the second most popular social media platform in Northern Ireland is Instagram. And Instagram is a relatively new social media platform um, that is based primarily on photo and video content, but is also a social media network in its own, it's in its own right. It's very, very popular with younger people or millennials who are aged between late teens and mid thirties. And it has seen huge growth in the past two years, especially. So it's now at 38%, whereas a few years ago, that would have only been at 20%. So Instagram is a very important part of modern social media marketing. And thirdly, we have Twitter, 28% of people using Twitter. Twitter is a real time uh, social media network made up of uh, tweets, which are short pieces of um, text and also video and photo content, if you should wish. And it's really about live interaction. So people would, would go on Twitter, find out the latest um, kind of political views or, for instance, if they're following the football team, but also just actually to, to follow different celebrities or people that they like in terms of building up their own kind of um, tailored news channel. And fourthly, we have Snapchat. So Snapchat is a photo app uh, that sits on a smartphone and it allows people to send um, bits of photography content or video content uh, in a social setting. So very, very popular with younger people. And again, we want to use it to socialize and to share content with friends. Then we have Pinterest. So Pinterest is an online pin board. Uh, again, another social media network where people can go in and take an upload um, different photo or indeed video content to Pinterest and create boards on different themes. So you might, anybody that's used uh, Pinterest can tell you that they will have boards on different themes that could be on, on, on travel or top destinations that they want to go to or top highlights of Italy that they, that they want to see. Or for instance, if they are redecorating their homes, they might have a dedicated board on that just with visual ideas. Um, so Pinterest is growing uh, as well in, across the world and it's become particularly um, particularly rapid growth in the past couple of years. And last but not least, we have LinkedIn. Uh, and LinkedIn is the main social media network for professionals. It's very, very important for people in the business to business sphere. So that's the, the overview of social media network use in uh, Northern Ireland. And there's also a new arrival on the scene in terms of uh, TikTok, which uh, has grown rapidly in the last couple of months to be one of the main social media networks that younger people are using as well. And that allows people to uh, kind of lip sync over videos that they have. And it's all about kind of creating fun and uh, kind of parodying people, whether it's music or politicians or different people online. So watch the space for TikTok because it's going to grow quite considerably in the next couple of years. So the other important thing to look at in social media is the time on site that people spend on different social media platforms, because all social media platforms are not equal. And again, you can see that Facebook is way out in front in terms of the amount of time that people spend on Facebook. So there's a staggering amount of time that people spend on Facebook average user per day. So it's now up to about 45 minutes a day on Facebook. And that goes up to the full hour when you take in Facebook Messenger. So as a media properties, um, Facebook is, is very, very influential and impactful. Um, Snapchat as well, um, a lot of time spent on that, although that has slipped in, in recent years. And then Instagram as well, been what we call a sticky site, and that people would dip in and out of it regularly through the day. 
So that's a good overview to the time that people spend on social media networks. And then finally, just to look at what young people um, are naming as their top social media network. So it's interesting to look at the change over the past couple of years uh, across social media networks where people, young people previously would have been um, Twitter as one of their favorite social media networks. That's declined very rapidly. And now they're much more focused on Instagram and also on Snapchat. So if you are doing campaigns that are kind of solely focused on young people, do remember that their social media environment is quite different and that they are using different social media channels and you have to adapt your content accordingly if you're using them. So time for some top tips on social media. What I've done in the next uh, 15, 20 minutes or so is actually pick out some of the best tips that I have based on my 10 years experience in working in, in social media, helping companies and businesses to get the right content and how to make it work for them. So the first thing I'm going to kick off with one of my favorite cartoons on marketing. And this is really about um, how people kind of get started on social media. So it shows the, uh, the manager asking, what's the big campaign idea? And then the, uh, the maybe the marketing manager talking here about going digital, going to use Facebook, going to use YouTube, uh, Pinterest. And then he's asked, what are you going to do with all of these channels? And he's probably quite stumped and he said, well, I don't know, we'll figure that out later. So this is a really good example of how most companies and businesses approach social media. It's, I don't know, they'll set up the channels and figure it all out later. But really what you need to do it effectively is have a plan for how you're going to use different social media networks and particularly the content that you're going to have. And the other big question is like, are you going to advertise? Um, Facebook and a lot of the other social media networks give really good opportunities for advertising on their networks. So that's a consideration that you have to have. But also then, as I mentioned, the content of how you're going to engage with people on those channels. So my first tip is reflect the reason why people are on social media. So people aren't on social media primarily to interact with businesses and brands, but businesses and brands have a very good opportunity to get into that space where people are for so long during the day to interact with them. So let's look at the top reasons why people are on social media. So this is a piece of research recently that asked people just the kinds of things that they do on social media on a day-to-day -day basis. And as you can see, it's heavily skewed towards having fun and socializing. So think of social media networks as social channels where people can go in and connect and interact with their friends or people that they are following. But also this aspect of, of having fun as well, about being entertained um, and about keeping informed as well. So it's a very good idea just to, to look back on that and look at the types of things of how you can actually kind of reflect that in your own social media content. What you don't want to do is to make all your social media content kind of sales oriented because again, that will turn people off and that's not why they're on social media. So you do have to kind of tweak your messages and think carefully about the content that you have to make sure that it's adaptable to social media. Interesting also to look at the types of social media that um, content that people actually like. Um, so what do people click on? What do people like and share? online and the absolute standout top types of content are humorous content that's what people engage with most uh, followed by personal photos and videos and stories so this kind of shows or highlights the, the vanity culture that there always has been on, on social media if you're imagining people kind of out on um, Instagram taking like um, photos and videos of parties that they're at or concerts or, or, or different types of activities there's a big kind of emphasis on social media of, of look at me, look what I'm doing. And then also there's a personal status update. Again, of people actually just saying this is what they're doing during the day or maybe they're out on holiday and they're kind of exploring, showing that to their friends as well. There's also a lot of emphasis on movie, TV and video game content and also news and current affairs, uh, events and restaurant reviews and people who are tweeting or maybe commenting about celebrity news as well. So it's good to look at that overview um, so it can guide you in terms of, 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 of 
understanding what people like on social media. Also making your content people-centered. So this is one of the very top recommendations I would give for businesses that are starting out on social media. Again, make sure that it's very much, um, very much concentrated on the social element. So just an example of what I mean, this is, um, this is a story from one of my favorite uh, brands, it's Wicklow Wolf Brewing Company. And Visit Wicklow have profiled the company in one of their Facebook posts, our Instagram posts, and they're saying that Wicklow Wolf Brewing Company celebrate their fifth birthday this week. So they're doing a little shout out to Wicklow Wolf and they have a great um, photograph of them at their uh, den bar in the, uh, in the brewery. But it's basically, the reason why it works well is that it's a photograph of real people in a social setting. So think of opportunities on how your business can develop um, content that's based around real people. And that could include like, you know, the, the, the manager of the business or maybe it's spotlight on, let's say you have a um, cocktail waiter in your hotel and a bit of like um, Q&A with that person and a nice photograph about what they like about different types of co cocktails and their top tips, for instance. So just, just remember that the importance of that when you're doing your social media content. And certainly from another brand that I really like um, is Junior's Deli in Dublin. Um, this is a just a nice little profile piece on one of the um, staff members, Orla, and it's basically shouting out that it's a 10 year anniversary. So it's a nice little piece and a nice photograph as well. Again, people-centered, nice, positive content. So the next tip I'd give is make your content exceptional, okay? You're better off concentrating on a smaller amount of content that is better quality rather than a deluge of content that doesn't really mean anything to people. And also make sure that your, your visual standards, your quality standards, whether it's photo or video, are very good quality. So this is an example of um, Restaurant Polly's in, in Dublin. And they really got um, a sense of the, the beauty of this particular food product, really, really well presented. And that kind of content performs well on social media, um, particularly with followers that that company will have. And a similar being from Galway Bay Hotel. So obviously one of their staff members has gone out and got this absolutely stunning photograph of the sunset right outside the hotel. So it's a little bits of, 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 of opportunities like that for beautiful, well-made professional content that people are going to react well to. And if you can look at the bottom of this particular post, you can see the high amount of, of uh, engagement that it's got. So engagement, we mean likes and, and shares and also comments as well. So that's one of the signs that pieces of content have done well if people actually engage with it positively. Next is embrace user-generated content. So user-generated content is a very important part of modern marketing and in social media marketing in particular. And basically what it is, it's uh, how brands encourage their fans or their users to actually take um, content related to the brand and share it on their own social media networks, okay? So you'll get brands like Ben & Jerry's were, were the ice cream brand were one of the first to do this. And what they did is that they encouraged uh, people across the world to take um, selfies and different types of content, photo content mainly, about them eating Ben & Jerry's ice creams, you know, different locations. And they used this then as part of competitions that they did. But the benefit for the brand is that they get people engaging with their, their products from people who are, are fans of the brand. And this is an example of, um, a, uh, a photograph I've taken a Cuvier in, in France. And just this background, we've got this kind of like um, um, photo frame image, but it's actually an, 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 an iron um, a photo frame that sits in front of this beautiful little town. And basically what the Cuvier Tourism Board are encouraging people to do, and they, they I think they developed this in the 1920s. So it's quite an old um, piece of uh, encouragement to, 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 of user generated content. But people from all over the world who visit Cuvier will take this exact shot through this photo frame and then share it on social media. And it's just a great way to, uh, a great example then of, of, of how tourism boards would encourage people to take 
pieces of content like that and to share it online. So as an example of tourism, um, regional tourism organization that is very strong on user generated content and encouraging it, it's the Newfoundland and Labrador um, tourism um, organization in Canada. And what they do, they're very, very good on social media and they're very good at encouraging ordinary people, whether that's domestic tourists or international tourists, to take content and share it online. So they're encouraging people to use the hashtag um, explore NL. And as you can see in this next post, um, they have some adventures are more colorful than others. What are your favorite fall hikes? And then we have um, we have uh, an organization that is, is tagged in there, Newfoundland Photo Tours, who have um, included the hashtag and have included the hashtag as well. And then when you go through to three people, they would take photographs of that region and they would use the hashtag and post that to their own social media networks in this case. Instagram. So it's creating this kind of viral um, impact of content and encouraging people to take content and share it online. So if you are a um, hotel or a restaurant or a bar or run a, a tourism organization, that's something that you should consider in your social media strategies, how to encourage people to take and share positive content. And also look to dominant hashtags as well, and what are the main hashtags that you can use. Here's one of the top ones that's used for Irish tourism, and it's hashtag Love Ireland. But you might want to look at other popular hashtags, like such as hashtag Love Belfast, or hashtag Belfast, or whatever region you're in, or whatever sector you're in as well. So the next tip for tourism businesses is to leverage the power of influencers. So influencers are very important on social media and they can include people who, for instance, are food bloggers or they might be um, media personalities or sports personalities that you can actually reach out to and leverage online. So as an example, we have here, uh, this is an article then from Paul O'Connell and um, he's talking here about taking a short break in Northern Ireland and there's a very big opportunity with reaching out to travel journalists and travel bloggers um, for tourism businesses. So it might be one of the things you want to do is to make a list of top travel bloggers um, within Ireland or internationally that you might want to reach out to. And there's also the power of um, food bloggers as well, particularly in the, the food industry. And here we have uh, Juniors Dublin who have um, done a really good post about the, um, they were hosting somebody from the Dublin Food Guide and they've done a really good piece and then they have um, re-promoted that content or re it on their own uh, Instagram account. So this is a lot more impactful because um, it's, 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 it's an authority and form of a blog. They've done a really positive piece on Juniors Dublin and what they're doing is just sharing that so it, it stands out more than if the company was able to, to do this content themselves because it's coming from an authority source. And there's also then, as I mentioned, like teaming up with bloggers and there's lots of different bloggers in all different sectors of business. Um, so one of the things you might want to do is, as I said, is reach out to um, bloggers in your own sector. And here's an example of Monaghan Tourism who have um, done a piece then on, on they're saying great pictures and a fab review of her first trip to Monaghan by Where is Tara? So Tara then runs her own food and hospitality and travel blog and then promotes that. So different types of businesses, different tourism organizations will want to link in with Tara so that they can visit their destination and write positively about it. Utilizing stories. So social media is based in and around story content and that's what people engage with most on social media. So you need to think about what types of stories we have on social media. And again, looking back to Visit Wicklow, we are very, very positive on social media content and develop content that is really engaging, really fresh, really interesting. And here's a piece on um, Alpaca Joe, as he's obviously one of the um, tourism business providers in Wicklow. And they're just doing a nice little video piece about Joe and the business that he has. Um, but it's something that, as I say, has a bit of a standout appeal, would be interesting 
when people are scrolling down social media, there will be a lot more chance of them actually stopping and not viewing that content if it's, if it's interesting and it's story based. And similarly, in terms of video stories and engagement, um, Peace and One and Tourism or Travel Colleagues, they are independent, are writing a major feature on Ireland's best dog and pet friendly destinations. Would love to include the best places to go with your pets in Monaghan. So what they did then is reach out to local people uh, and ask them um, for top tips on pet friendly uh, locations and businesses across the county. And that's something that again is very powerful in social media, just reaching out to people and getting them to positively comment. And there was a lot of really, really great content generated by that as well. Instagram stories and, and indeed Facebook stories are becoming much more important on those platforms. And basically Instagram stories are um, pieces of content made up of um, photo or video content that people can then share on their own um, accounts. And a lot of businesses have turned to um, developing stories, story related content, um, to give them a bit of added visibility on those social media platforms. As example, Airbnb, for instance, um, did a really good series of um, profiles of story profiles of people that ran Airbnbs across the world. And this is an example of a um, an Italian family, its mother and her daughter, who are um, basically doing a story on on on, on their kind of culinary um, work in the uh, the B&B that they run in, in Italy, and just showing them a bit of flavour about that business and it looked good for the business, but it'll also allow the Airbnb to build up this authentic, positive content and add more depth to their brand. Utilizing social media advertising. So earlier on, I had mentioned about the importance of social media advertising and using it positively. So the reason why social media advertising is so important, particularly on Facebook and Instagram, is that the uh, organic reach for businesses on Facebook in particular has declined very rapidly in the last number of years. So what I mean by that is that uh, if somebody has a Facebook page, for instance, a business, and they are posting uh, content on a regular basis, there's only a very small fraction of people that actually get to see that content in their new feeds, people that are following that business. So the, the average organic reach for posts is very, very low, and it's actually as low as about 3% in Ireland. So what you want to do, and what a lot of businesses are doing, is utilizing Facebook advertising, which allows you to micro-target different types of audiences um, by age, by demographic, by interest, and by geolocation as well, so that you can target them better. And of course, it is a paid service to Facebook, but a lot of businesses use it well, report very, very positive experiences of using Facebook advertising for their business. So just an example um, from, this is Calvin, um, promoting Taste of Calvin festival that they had um, a number of years ago. And you can see here at the bottom, you have the amount of interaction on that particular post, but in the Netherlands you have the organic reach and in the dark orange you have the paid reach. So the organic reach would have come from people that have liked that page and got a chance to see that organically, but the paid reach was just a bit more um, bit more, uh, emphasis that we had on targeting those exact users. So that might have been parents, for instance, of children between the pickery, or it might have been people that Facebook had identified as having an interest in, in food and wine in Cabin or in that surrounding area. So let's look at social media engagement. Social media engagement is a very important part of marketing. What do we mean by that? Well, it's likes, comments, and shares on different social media content. And we're going to look now at a couple of examples of um, tourism-related um, arts businesses who do that really, really well. So one of my favorite brands, one of my favorite uh, locations in Belfast is Queen's Film Theatre. They're very, very good on social media. I really like their style of posts and what they do, but particularly the way that they engage with their customers and people who are fans of the PFT. So I'm going to just show you a couple of examples here. Um, and again, this is kind of a, just interaction that they would have. Don't think of social media as a one-way broadcast tool because it will not work for you. 
it works most effectively when you're actually talking to people and that includes like tagging them for instance let's say if there's people that um you had a journalist who, who visited your hotel and they were writing the feature on it again write a story about that tag them in and thank them for visiting i say you know hope you had a really great time great to help you uh, staying at the hotel this weekend so that's just a normal that's what we do in real life that's like how socialization actually works and i want people to reflect that in the way that they do social media content and again look into organizations like um queen's film theater is a good way to to pick up examples of how that works some more examples of stakeholder and people engagement so again just one from um mentioned earlier on that post from is it wicklow but what actually when you look into the engagement there um marty has written that uh, i would love a tour from newcastle uh wicklow and um visit wicklow have got back to them and said marty o'gara keep an eye out tours will be available in, in the near future so that organization that are listening to what's been said online and also monitoring their social media notifications and they're picking up on examples or opportunities for them to go and engage with ordinary people. So that's something that a uh, effective organization does on social media is, is engage with people. So you have hashtags and campaigns as well. So um, hashtags, hashtags are a really good way to raise the visibility and also the uh, context of your content as well. So they have used the hashtag, hashtag Wicklow uh, in this particular shot to give it more context. So the next chapter that we're gonna look at following on from social media is search marketing for tourism and hospitality. The search engine marketing is the overall term for search engine optimization and pay per click marketing. And search engine optimization is the process of increasing the visibility of your website in the organic search engine rankings in search engines such as Google. And pay-per-click marketing is paid advertising where you're using, for instance, Google AdWords to increase the visibility of your website in Google, but you are paying on a pay-per-click basis to Google for that visibility. So one of the videos uh, that explains this well is um, from the legendary Matt Cutts, who was a former engineer at Google. And Matt Cutts explains then about um, what, what, what is search engine optimization and how to make it work for your business. And it's a great video because he demystifies an area which a lot of people find quite confusing, but really is built on a number of just logical principles that you need to follow if you want to rank highly in social media or in, in search um, marketing. Hi, my name is Matt Cutts. I'm an engineer in the quality group at Google, and I'd like to talk today about what happens when you do a web search. The first thing to understand is that when you do a Google search, you aren't actually searching the web. You're searching Google's index of the web, or at least as much of it as we can find. We do this with software programs called spiders. Spiders start by fetching a few web pages, then they follow the links on those pages and fetch the pages they point to, and follow all the links on those pages and fetch the pages they link to, and so on, until we've indexed a pretty big chunk of the web, many billions of pages stored across thousands of machines. Now, suppose I want to know how fast a cheetah can run. I type in my search, say, cheetah running speed, and hit return. Our software searches our index to find every page that includes those search terms. In this case, there are hundreds of thousands of possible results. How does Google decide which few documents I really want? By asking questions, more than 200 of them, like, how many times does this page contain your keywords? Do the words appear in the title, in the URL, directly adjacent? Does the page include synonyms for those words? Is this page from a quality website or is it low quality, even spammy? What is this page's page rank? That's a formula invented by our founders, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, that rates a web page's importance by looking at how many outside links point to it and how important those links are. Finally, we combine all those factors together to produce each page's overall score and send you back your search results, 
about half a second after you submit your search. At Google, we take our commitment to delivering useful and impartial search results very seriously. We don't ever accept payment to add a site to our index, update it more often, or improve its ranking. Let's take a look at my search results. Each entry includes a title, a URL, and a snippet of text to help me decide whether this page is what I'm looking for. I also see links to similar pages, Google's most recent stored version of that page, and related searches that I might want to try next. And sometimes, along the right and at the top, I'll see ads. We take our advertising business very seriously as well, both our commitment to deliver the best possible audience for advertisers and to strive to only show ads that you really want to see. We're very careful to distinguish your ads from regular search results. And we won't show you any ads at all if we can't find any that we think will help you find the information you're looking for, which in this case, the cheetah's top running speed is more than 60 miles an hour. Thanks for watching. I hope this made Google a little bit more understandable. So let's take a look at what a possible consumer search might be for a well-known term, Tours of Belfast. So first of all, somebody would enter that into search engines such as Google, and then they would get the following um, search engine results. So the first results that they would get in this case are the three advertisements at the top of Google. So again, this is a really important point then for um, search engine visibility and the reason why so many companies actually use pay per click because they want to be in that top space. Um, here we have a couple of different brands, including um, getyourguide.com and uh, TEM Kuchar, who have both taken out ads uh, to promote their business with kind of different kind of marketing calls to action and, and branding as well. And then you can click through, the user would click through to their respective websites. The next part of the search uh, engine results page then, just below the page search uh, results, will be on um, the Google Maps and the Google My Business listings. So there are separate videos in this uh, program on um, Google My Business, um, but this is good to look at in terms of the, the, the second bit that people actually see there. So scrolling down again, we're into the organic search results on that page. So the top listing here is from TripAdvisor and their page, the 10 best um, Belfast tours. And then below that, we have Visit Belfast and their Sightseeing Tours page. So basically what Google here are, are doing is that they're listing um, the content in the order that they think that it's most valuable and important for their um, searchers, okay, for that particular search. It's worth knowing that uh, a huge amount of uh, overall click traffic go to the first three organic search results. So this is important to consider why if you're a business of been uh, ranking highly organically, because that's where most of those clicks actually go. So what's the difference between pay-per-click or paid search and search engine optimization? Let's take a look. So SEO, as I explained, was the process of uh, achieving high rankings in the natural search results and pay-per-click where you pay for your listing. So some of the pros and cons. Um, some people might prefer search engine optimization um, because it's more of a long-term process. Um, there is residual work that goes into improving the rankings organically over time, but then over a long period of time, that has a, a bigger benefit. Searchers tend to trust organic listings more than sponsored links, and also the cost of SEO is relatively fixed, independent of click volume. So once you've done the work and you perform well, you will get that. Um, you should get a steady stream of traffic over time, and you don't have to pay for that. However, some people would prefer pay per click um, because it is instant results and generate visitors early in a site launch. So, for instance, if I was a new business or I was starting up a new marketing campaign uh, and I didn't have um, the time to invest in kind of medium to long term results in search engine optimization, I might want to go with having a Google AdWords campaign that would give me immediate results that can be set up quickly. Um, also, pay-per-click is protected from algorithm updates. Um, some people that have been active in, in SEO have um, 
encountered um, penalties from Google changing or adapting their algorithm and finding that sometimes that they have suffered big drops when they were previously ranking highly in search engine results. And after the algorithm updates, they were knocked off those top spaces and performed poorly. Some of the downsides on, on SEO versus um, pay-per-click. So some of the downsides people would say about SEO is that it takes time and results for the work to take effect. It also does take um, good operational knowledge of how SEO works. And look, there's, there's scores of businesses that do this really, really well in Northern Ireland. Uh, they run hotels or, or restaurants and uh, different tourism attractions. Um, but they tend to either have somebody that is uh, an expert in search engine optimization or they're building up good level of knowledge and practice on doing SEO well themselves. Uh, and in terms of why some people say that pay-per-click would lose in that battle, um, saying that pay-per-click also has a learning curve and requires testing website variables um, and also requires money to buy traffic which can be costly if, um, again, if you don't know what you're doing and you're, you're, you're not knowledgeable about how pay-per-click works, I would recommend in this area of getting somebody expert or capable in to run it for you. So let's take a look at local search and uh, Google My Business. So Google My Business, you're probably familiar with, is the free listing that Google gives to all businesses with a physical location. And to help that business just describe a bit more about what they do and provide content and also allow people to make reviews and links through to their website. So this is Polly's Pizza in Dublin. So if somebody uh, then Googles that particular brand, that I would encourage all businesses to check what their um, search engine reputation is by doing their own search on their own brand in Google. But here we have um, a number of different um, areas on the, the left hand side, which is the search engine results. But on the right hand side, we have the Google My Business listing. And they've done a really good job here putting in lots of photography. They've also gained a lot of very, very positive reviews as well, which is very important for um, hospitality businesses because it has a big impact then on people, people through to your website or book with you as well. So as a business, you will absolutely want to encourage those positive reviews. Just a couple of top tips on that. Um, it's good to have a system in your business for um, targeting customers who are really, really happy with what you do and encouraging them by uh, asking them to write reviews. So that could be by email after they have um, stayed with you or dined with you, or it could actually be at the end of the evening where you hand them a card, for instance, see some restaurants do that, where they are encouraging them to write a positive review on Google and on other areas like TripAdvisor. There's also new features in Google My Business that allow hospitality owners to go in and actually just upload content. Um, so here we have an example of Barbara Oliver Jewelry, and Barbara has gone in and added um, good pieces of content, photo content, uh, as posts on the Google My Business uh, listing. There's also an opportunity for you to take a 360 degree panoramic overview of your business. So that's something that you should explore. Again, all of this is free from Google for all businesses with physical location. A lot of businesses, in my experience, don't utilize a lot of those features. So check out the um, post features and also the 360 degree uh, overview as well. There's also a feature in Google My Business to actually build a website as well. So this might be for a small or micro business that maybe doesn't have a budget for website design yet. So they want to get started on their, their web presence. And Google allows you to go in and create your, your own web presence here for free. It might be something that they do initially before they actually approach uh, or get a budget together to get one that's more professional. But it's a good way for micro businesses start off. So best practice and uh, Google My Business, updating your business info, adding in photography again of your exterior and interior, of your food, of your products and also of your staff as well. Have a virtual tour and respond to reviews. So the first part of search engine marketing 
um, really revolves in around key freeze research. Okay, so this is where businesses go in and find out what the opportunities are for ranking or paying for uh, search engine traffic. But first of all, they have to have a think about the key phrases that they will want to target. So key phrase research provides uh, you with specific search data that helps you answer questions like what are people searching for? How many people are searching for it? And in what format do they want that information? So you need to take time if you're doing search engine marketing. This is the first step, the most important step. Uh, is to find out what key phrases are relevant to your business. Um, how relevant are they? And why are people searching on the phrases? And what content that can you create that meets their needs? So selecting key phrases, for instance, one of the short phrases might be Belfast Tours that we looked at earlier, but that actually might be quite hard to rank for because there's a lot of different businesses that are uh, that already rank very highly for that and some of them are big businesses or Bel visit Belfast and you will find it hard to rank highly for that particular key phrase. However, it might be um, smarter to go for what's called a long tail key phrase where there is a smaller degree of searches but it's more in tune and more relevant to what your business actually is. So let's say for instance you're a bespoke um, private tour operator in Northern Ireland you actually might want to focus on the key phrase for your Belfast um, tour page of having small private uh, group tours in Belfast, which means you have a much higher chance your website is relevant and you're using that long tail key phrase and you have group content on your site to rank highly for that term. And it's the same for a couple of the other examples I've given as well. So think about short term phrases and also long tail phrases as well. So let's take a look at paid search, which is also called pay per click or search engine advertising. So the most common form of paid search is Google Ads. And Google Ads is Google's own advertising service, which allows you to place search results on your website um, for by paying for them. So as an example earlier on, just to go back to the Tours of Belfast search, which I showed you the, the ads that appear for that particular search query. And similarly, um, Milan Museum, for instance, um, have taken out a paid ad on their own brand. So this is something that's popular and it's not very expensive for businesses to do to, to, to advertise on their own brand. But it just absolutely makes sure that you're the top search listing for that particular query. So how does it actually work in terms of paid search? So the first step is um, the user actually just making a search, in this case on Google. And then they are um, they're served with a number of ads by different advertisers. So we have ads from advertiser A down to advertiser D. So AdWords find all the ads whose keywords match for particular search query. And then what happens is that there's a competitive bidding war or an auction. And Google decides the ads um, based on the quality score, the bid amount, and the expected ad extensions and ad format. So it's not just a simple matter of paying more money than another advertiser to get the top spots. It is a competitive bidding war. Uh, and then finally, the result, the ads is displayed in that order that wins the auctions. Um, and you can you can work on different areas, for instance, like let's say if you have a low quality score, you can take action on your website to improve that, or you can raise your bid slightly as well as a factor which could help improve that. So if you want to get started with Google uh, um, Ads, um, you can go to uh, Grow Your Business with Google Ads on, on Google and just find out a bit more about it and make an estimation of if it would work for your, for your business. There's also the opportunity, the, the question that I think a lot of businesses ask is, should they outsource um, paid search to a um, to a marketing agency or a professional who can do it properly, or should they do it in-house? So this is really a question that you have to answer, but one of the really big benefits of outsourcing it to a um, businesses that do it properly is that they have built up a lot of experience in managing it effectively for business. It is quite competitive and it does require specialist knowledge, so I would generally encourage people to do that, unless they've built up a really good practical knowledge of doing it themselves.
So search engine optimization, let's take a, a deeper dive into that. So search engine optimization, what I'm going to do in this section is just talk to you some of the main factors. Um, and an area that I think a lot of people find is quite kind of confusing or difficult to kind of understand. But really, there's a core number of principles that will help you understand more about it. So in terms of the most important search ranking factors, um, there's a number of ones that I want to concentrate on. Okay? So one of the main areas I'm asked about for clients in SEO was how to positively influence um, search engines. So let's take a look at an SEO checklist. So I've highlighted some of the um, most effective um, tactics um, that I've been able to use in, in SEO and, and that worked for me. The first one is to have a crawlable, accessible URL whose content Google can easily parse and index. So um, you'll want to think about um, checking your URLs to make sure that they're simple for Google to understand. And secondly, and this is really important, is having the most credible um, person or team available to create content that serves searchers' goal and solves their task better than anybody else on page one. So what do we mean by that? It's basically um, websites that, that tend to perform really well in, in natural search rankings tend to have a lot of very well-written content uh, and also different types of graphic content um, as well that help a user to find out more about a particular topic. So for instance, you might have a solicitor that's created an online guide to a particular area of law, like defamation or family law, that actually the users would find really um, important and beneficial when doing their research on Google. So if the firm had that on their website, um, there's a better chance that Google would index it or would use it positively and that, that Particular companies' um, search engine rankings would be positively influenced because of that good quality content. Um, crafting a compelling title, meta description, URL, and other elements that can appear in the snippet as well, and also focusing on your um, your meta data, um, your meta information, um, which includes your your meta title and your meta description, which is basically just that. Uh, I'm going to show you an example of that later on. Um, and, and, and that's an area for you to really check. Because in my experience, then of companies that have performed poorly in social and in, in search engine optimization, a lot of it has come from having poor um, meta information on their website. So the long tail of SEO, just to go back to this. So this is just an example of asking here: Are you focusing on the right keywords? So um, just an example of a law firm. Uh, if it wanted to actually get um, the very, very high rankings for uh, a phrase like law firm would be incredibly difficult because there's, that, there's so many businesses, so many law firms that are competing for that. But let's say if a power had a particular specialism or was based in a particular area, then it might want to be um, smarter and go for a long tail key phrase that is easier to rank and easier to convert because it's more relevant for that particular user's query. So in this case, it might be how do I hire a law firm in Utah? So they've got the geolocation and also law firm in as well, but it's a lot more targeted. So if I was a law firm in, in Utah, uh, I might want to be considering that. Or let's say if it's a specialist law firm, for instance, if it was a defamation or family law firm specialism, then you would put that in as well. So I'm now going to dive into some of the points that I made earlier and expand on them. And the first one I mentioned then in the SEO checklist was the scale of URL readability, okay? So at the top, here's a really good example of a URL that is easy for Google or any other search engine to uh, parse and index. So here you have mydomain.com slash puppies, hyphen adorability, hyphen confused, hyphen by, hyphen rainbow. So that is easy for a search engine to read. And here we have down at the bottom, uh, a link where you have um, this particular, again, um, my domain, and then you have this like, long string. It doesn't tell Google anything about the content on that site. So Google will not like that and will penalize that heavily in the search engine rankings. So it's one top tip is to go back and just check that your URLs are easy to read. And you might want to get your website designer to go in and change those, for instance. 
uh, or you can do it yourself in, uh, if you have the technical know-how to do that in your content management system. So the meta information, um, again, a lot of organizations have not thought about this properly and end up having poor meta information. The meta information is basically the, um, the, the types of information that Google use then to um, display on its search engine results. And it's made up of two parts. One is the title tag, and then one is the meta description. So the title tag here, I have highlighted. Okay, so um, you have the very, very top here, you have all about the title tag for search engine optimization, and that's highlighted in purple. And then below that, you have the meta description, where you have here simply choose the most relevant key phrase um, that the copy was based on. And then below that, you have the URL. So that is the overview of meta information. So make sure that you have the right key phrases that you're targeting in that, and also that it's well written as well. So here's an example then just to show that in practice. The search term learn Italian in Sicily. And then it's a really good example then of, of a high ranking um, website that Google's returned and it's Italian language schools in, in Sicily, Italian courses in Sicily. And that's the meta um, title that they have. And then below that, um, you have Italian courses, um, sorry, in gray, you have Italian courses in Sicily and you have that's the meta description. So content for SEO rankings. So this is going to give you some advice on developing content for SEO. So just an example of my own website. This is a tactic that I use really, really effectively in the past couple of years. And it's um, basically looking for some of the really top key phrases that people would use in relation to social media in Ireland. So one of the top phrases is social media use in Ireland. People want to find out the stats what different platforms people are using. And I've developed a uh, series of infographics and also a blog on that topic. So I am one of the highest ranked search terms um, for that particular query. So you go in and just read that um, piece of highlighted social media use in Ireland 2019 of the digital. So that's the meta title. And then the description in gray below that is the latest stats and analysis of social media usage in Ireland 2019. Facebook to LinkedIn by Paul McGarry. It's also the infographics rank really, really highly in image search as well, which is another part of um, the Google search platform that you'll want to consider. Um, and that, that particular blog has performed really, really effectively. In fact, it's my meeting web page for traffic on my website. So there's always the question of whether you should outsource SEO. And my advice is similar to questions of whether you should outsource paid search. It's really, look, if you think that you can build up the capability and knowledge to do basic SEO yourself, then that might be a course of action for you. However, it is um, technically difficult for um, people who don't have knowledge to do it themselves. And what they might want to do is just consider options from qualified professional um, SEO professionals who can do it effectively. But I would always ask for demonstrable proof of um, work that they have done effectively for businesses or you do business with them. And last but not least, um, search is constantly evolving. And one of the big areas then um, that people have to focus on now is um, voice search. Okay, so voice searches are a lot more popular. People have um, different um, uh, pieces of hardware like Alexa in their home homes now and they're using it to search for things. And it's problematic from search engine optimization point of view because they tend to just return one um, search um, result for that. Okay, So it's even more difficult to rank highly on um, voice search than it is on normal search. Okay. So you do need to bear that in mind, but some companies have been able to do that pretty effectively um, by using featured snippets. So this is one of the ways that um, these platforms are uh, ranking people in or returning um, information for search queries. So featured snippets in search, when a user asks a question in Google search, we might show a search result in a um, special featured snippet block at the top of the search results page. So having featured snippet uh, is one of the biggest factors then for ranking highly in voice search. 
So that brings us to an end for our session today. We've covered um, an overview of social media, what social media is, what social media platforms are popular in Northern Ireland, and some of the dif different um, areas that people use them for. I've given you best practice examples of people actually using social media, to help tips on how to use social media content and engagement effectively. And then we've looked at search engine marketing, very, very important part of modern marketing, or how businesses then improve their search engine visibility, either by paid search or by SEO. And I've given you some tips and areas to think of as well in that important area. So there are some exercises as well that you're free to do at the end of uh, this session. And I look forward to the Q&A. Thank you very much.